Hello, and welcome to our tips and tricks video. My name is Kevin Wismer. I'm an applications engineer for DP Technology. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your stock in the subspindle for accurate simulation of multi-spindle machining. First, I'm going to show you how to set up your stock in the subspindle in a file where we program operations on the main spindle, a part transfer, and then operations on the subspindle. The first thing I'd like to do is show you how to add our stock status for stock automation to the operations tab. To do this, navigate to the operations tab. We're going to move up here to the headers of our sections. We're going to right click on either header and then find advanced and select our field chooser. We're then going to go ahead and add the stock to the field chooser and click OK. And now we can see that we have our stock status for stock automation. In this file, I've pre-programmed operations on our main spindle, then I programmed a part transfer, and then I programmed operations on the subspindle. In order to get stock on the subspindle, we need to program a pickup and a cutoff, or release. These are essential for allowing a spree to recognize that there is stock in the subspindle. And I'll go ahead and show you how the pickup, bar feed, and cutoff are reflected in simulation and how it adds stock to the subspindle. So we'll go ahead and simulate. We can see that it shows the operations on the main spindle. And then it shows the pickup, bar feed, and cutoff. And we have stock and operations on the subspindle. Next, I'll show you how to set up your stock in the subspindle in a file where we are going to do simultaneous machining in both the main spindle and the subspindle. For this, we're going to want to show in simulation stock loaded in the main spindle and the subspindle from the start of the program. I have pre programmed the file to have both operations in my main spindle and subspindle before the part transfer. The way it is set up now, if I were to simulate, we can see that I have stock in my main spindle, but not my subspindle. To add stock to the subspindle at the beginning of the program, we need to program a part release. To do this, we'll go into our solid turn toolbar and select the part release button. I've pre-programmed the settings that I would like. I'll hit OK. I'll grab my release here in the operations tab and I'll move it up just before the part transfer. The next thing we want to do is add a sync right before the release. To do this, select your release, click, hold, and drag across to turret B side. Now if I simulate, I can see that when I start simulation from the beginning of the program, we get stock in both the main spindle and half machine stock in the sub spindle. And we can see the simultaneous machining. The auto substock add-in is a fast and easy way to show accurate simulation of stock in your subspindle. It's very effective when you have a file with a lot of operations that are programmed and need to quickly add stock to your subspindle. The first thing we'll do is delete the release that we programmed. We'll let the uh, stock automation update. Then we'll do a final state simulation. Once your final state simulation loads, we'll go ahead and find the auto substock button. We'll go ahead and click this. It will exit out of simulation. And we can take a look at the simulation parameters. And you'll notice that it actually adds a substock here. And it saves an STL for the substock and it changes the color to black for the stock. So you may want to change this back to blue or whatever color you were using for your uh, stock. We'll hit OK. We'll let the stock load. And if we hit pause, we can now see that we have substock in the beginning of our program. That's it for today's tips and tricks video. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter or share this video and stay tuned for more tips and tricks videos.